Hey everyone, let's make Christmas presents out of Christmas presents. <laughs> We're going to make some present shaped, gift shaped soaps. Um, hopefully you're reading the little note I have up there. I'm only going to talk today. So when you see something being poured, hopefully I will tell you what it is because I'm not going to write it this week. I'm just crazed. That was premium crystal clear soap base by crafter's choice i purchased mine in wholesale supplies plus they are the manufacturer of that soap base you can find it other places but i usually buy it at the manufacturer because it is the cheapest um but it, it isn't a, available there right now so you might be able to search other places for it hopefully it will be back in stock soon i'm Popping on there some plastic wrap. Mine is Glad Cling Wrap. That's the actual brand of it. It doesn't really matter. You're just creating wrinkles. That's all you want to do. And now I'm doing, you've, you guys hopefully have seen me do these techniques. If you haven't, I have about three videos talking about resin techniques. Resin, not resin soap, because there is no resin. These are just techniques that were developed um, or I should say kind of borrowed from the world of um, resin, resin art, and we have adapted it to soap, uh, melt and pour soap. You can make these designs and it looks like the designs they do in resin. Please remember that I'm editing this. So that soap that you saw me pour and do the wrinkles on that set up fully for at least an hour before I came back in and pulled that off. Um, I'm assuming you don't want to sit there for an hour while my soap dries. So that is what we're doing. We're putting a mica in. You can do a variety of things here. I do love to use the duochrome micas. If you noticed, that's all I put in that one. One type of mica because at every angle it's a little different. I have to say... Looking at it right now as I'm doing this voiceover, it does not pick up all the colors on the camera. It It's a little bit better once I get the, the top layer on, but it just, it doesn't do it justice. Uh, it's gorgeous and you only need one color. I'm also doing one color here. This is Mad Micah's um, King Tut Gold. And um, I am affiliated with them. I'm not affiliated with Wholesale Supplies Plus or TKB Trading, which is where the uh, red oak color, the duochrome, came from. Um, this is um, uh, my affiliation with Mad Micah's. Uh, if you find my affiliate link in the description box, I will get a kickback if you purchase through that link without it costing you any extra. So I am pouring um, black Real quick note, the one I'm pouring there, the little blue, that is Blue Moon Mica, and it's slightly tinted pink a little bit because somebody didn't properly clean her brush. So there's probably a bit of flirt mica in with that over over the top, but it's mostly Blue Moon. And I was showing you that little line in the middle. I wanted you to see that big spot. What you will see me do later is is originally done to cover up that spot <laughs> but uh, also a design for making gift soaps now uh, please ignore the trees they are in my previous video here you see a little better the duo duo chrome action you can see green reds and gold depending on the angle you're looking at with that mica it's fabulous if you haven't tried a duo chrome mica with these techniques um, do so if you get the chance they are more expensive I just buy this mostly. I buy the sample packs or when they go on sale. Um, what you see coming up here, I'm creating uh, a thin sheet of soap. In hindsight, I would have just done the pink. Um, it's a long story. But basically, I, um, I wanted to use gold as well. Um, and it just wasn't the right gold. Um, it was Sparkle Me Sunshine, Sparkle Sunshine from Mad Micah's. Um, and it's one of my favorite things to use ever because it is a, um, it's more like a glitter. Um, even though it's not truly a glitter, it looks like a glitter in soap. 
and and really imagine on anything you'd use it on or in it's fabulous and it's gorgeous but it just wasn't the right shade and I'm really picky when it comes to colors matching so um, it's not that things need to be matchy matchy to me it just needs to go um, and it I don't it didn't go quite for me so I ended up just using the pink in this one and I only ended up doing one ribbon and I'll tell you more about that in a little bit but right now all you need to know is I am pouring two colors at once at once and I'm pouring them at a fairly cool temperature I don't show that on camera but I'm um, and that that clear soap by the way that base is the um, that's the basic clear and I think I may have even mixed it with something else but I think it's the basic clear um, as you'll see it's not quite as clear as the as the um, premium crystal clear um, and I think I end up pouring about two ounces total to cover the bottom of this I did not weigh it I was not concerned about being super precise with that because I'm going for a look so I just needed to cover the bottom of my mold of my loaf mold there and um, I wanted it to be it needs to be thick enough to manipulate it but thin enough to be flexible so that you can manipulate it um, so I'm pouring at a cool temperature so they don't just immediately run together. Uh, I kind of was going for uh, the sides being a solid color and the center being a little bit of a swirl, which is what I ended up with, but then I didn't end up using the swirl or the gold. Um, I might down the road use it. I still have, um, have them. So um, actually I did use the gold on something, part of the gold. Um, but... You're basically just creating a ribbon. I'm cutting here. I was really doing the cheaters uh, quick way of doing things in this video. Because um, I had, as you may see there, I had a lot going on. Um, but the um, the ribbons themselves, if you want to be precise, get out a ruler and use a ruler. That's the proper way to do it. I, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Because um, these weren't straight. Um, it didn't really matter much for what I was using it for, but if you want nice straight lines, get out a ruler. It's far better than just using the backside of your mold <laughs> or the top side, really just upside down. Um, yeah, these strips here, um, I was planning to turn them all into little ribbons and put ribbons on more of them than I did. Um, I just ended up doing the one and you'll see, cause I wanted to show you a variety of ways you could do that. Cause these, these are they're not hard. They're just tedious and um, fussy and kind of, you know, uh, finicky to get the way you want, especially if you're fussy like me. <laughs> if you're if you are a kind of a perfectionist and I I'm not always, but with things like this, I want it to look like I want it to look like. So but it's not hard to make a little ribbon going across and you see where those seams meet up. I'm just placing it there until I can glue it because I wanted to get all the parts together before I started gluing. When I say glue, I don't mean using glue. I mean using soap. And by that, if you have never used soap to glue something on to one of your soaps, one of the most important things is to have it, is to make it hot. Um, I kind of am fooling here with this a little bit. And in hindsight, um, I would have just cut it in half right away and just cinched each end like I end up doing here. So I'm just shaping it into one side of a bow and then the other. You could also just cut plain triangles. But um, some of the other tips for gluing it on that the soap needs to be very hot um, and not hot enough to burn it, but you want it quite hot. And you also want to scratch if you can the underneath surface of where you're going to glue it on very carefully or the back side or both depending on your level of trust <laughs> with the, with your soap and how much you feel like it will stick. Um, it, it really seems to, uh, especially on the really slick surface of the original soap, because it's that the crystal clear and it came out of a mold, it's very slick. It doesn't have any, um, any uh, porousness to it or give to it. When I'm working with the ribbon, I'm manipulating bleh, manipulating it with my hands and with tools. And so there's little texture in there. And I'm not as worried when I'm gluing on top of the other ribbon. But adhering the ribbon 
to the soap, which I do in a second, you will see me using that same tool, the stylus tool, which all I'm doing is creating a couple of wrinkles in it. So when, when you tie a bow where it's cinched together, that's where um, the wrinkles happen. So I like to do that. You certainly don't have to. Like I said, you could put two triangles together and then put a little circle or a little diamond shape over it and you can get the look of a ribbon. And I have an easy, even easier way to turn these into presents, Christmas presents, um, which you will see in the coming photos. I ended up not doing it on film for various reasons, most of which I am um, insanely busy these next last few weeks, next couple weeks. It's just crazy. Not just business because, you, you know, the Black Friday stuff and, um, you know, all the small business sales, etc. Um, but life, just lots going on. So I'm adhering it. I don't let go of it until I know it's fairly solid. I wait a, a good few seconds. I don't just put it on there and just let go. Um, and this is one. There you see me scraping with my little tool. Just creating a little bit of area. It gives more surface area for that soap to stick to. And it stick it just sticks better than to a slick surface. Uh, just like if you were to sand a surface before you paint it, it is helping that to adhere. So um, I come back in and trim the bottoms later. I had originally uh, was thinking about bringing it around the back side, which is what I did to the first gift soaps I made like this years ago when I hadn't done them in years. So um, this was kind of a recap for me too. I didn't remember exactly what I had done. I was playing around with it as I went because it's been a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, yeah, you'll see me gluing that on that right where they meet up in the center. You have to remember, or I guess you don't have to, but it's important to remember that that's probably not going to show. If you choose to cover it enough with a little bow, it's not going to show. Um, if there's going to be an intersection there, whether you, you like it or not, if you're going to try to create that look, um, so I just wouldn't worry too much if there's a little gap in it or something, as long as you know you can cover it with your bow. Um, and I would, you know, you can measure that out ahead of time and see how big. Mine was pretty big, I think, for that, but it matched the width of the ribbon, and I think it looked fine. I did not create tails. You could. I think, uh, for me, it would have been too busy and too many layers going in and out from there, so I just left it alone. I think it looks really nice without the tails. Um, there's a lot of different things you could do with this idea. You could create a little mini tag if you wanted to. You could, you know, so many little different ways you could go. You could pour, you could do this on a plain red square. You don't have to do the raindrop technique, resin technique, or the crushed velvet resin technique. Um, you could just pour it pour a plain soap and do red and green and do, you know, do red and then a green ribbon. Or you could marble a little bit. You could, you could uh, marble two colors or you could layer some colors. You can do whatever you want with this. It's just creating a pretty square, which I did find these, these are little, um, and I think they're about two, two and a half ounces, two and a half Ca ounce cavities. They're little gray squares with it. Have a nice bevel on them and rounded corners. I love them. Found them on Amazon. I'll try to put the link on there if I can find it in the description box. Um, pretty sure I can because I've seen these um, plenty of times on Amazon looking for a variety of molds. Um, using my little stylus tool because it has a rounded end and is less likely to damage the soap underneath it I'm using it to clean up and you can still damage the soap underneath if you're not careful and you will see I, sh I also show you in this a little remedy for that which I'm just doing right now and that is a clean stiff ish paintbrush um, if you have just some little tiny I won't say nicks because that's really not what I mean it does not going to take out big scratches but little teeny tiny flaws in the surface of your soap if you're not happy with it after you've been working with it it can brush some of that off it can kind of create like a satiny texture 
and and smooth it out and then even this that the satiny texture is going to kind of go away once you spray it with that alcohol it's going to um kind of even it out a little bit more even so uh that's just a tip for if you have some i don't know little water spots or from your mold or uh, areas where you happened to uh, bump something on it or get a little overzealous with your tool. Um, it's just a nice way to clean it up. Here I'm exploring. I'm trying to figure out what I wanted to do, like I said, is the gold and the pink, but I just didn't like the way the golds looked next to one another. Um, and I also didn't like, even though I checked it before, I looked at the color of the present against the the glitter and I, I thought it might work but it didn't so I just didn't do it here's the finished guy I think he's so cute um and then I'm about to show you in some of the pictures um oh, I'm gonna show you a little gift set idea because the whole whole thing here is to give you ideas for your own gifting for your own um you know projects for fun for Christmas time uh these make great little gift sets if you do them in whatever kind of variety of colors you want to do you could do them all the same you could do the variety here that I chose was not supposed to be the, the colors were not chosen to go together so I kind of fudged it a little bit to get them to go together as you'll see when I box it but um they were I was just kind of playing around with colors and playing around with designs these three that you're going to see in a second uh, that I'm kind of ending this portion of the video with this, these are all the duochrome, and I thought they looked really cool together, and I think that would make a wonderful gift set to have different shapes and techniques, but the same color. Um, and here we have the same shape, but different techniques um, and different colors. So as you see, um, it, just the one soap with the ribbon on top gives the illusion to make the whole thing look like a bunch of packages. So you don't even necessarily need a ribbon on the rest of them if you package them in this way or showcase them in this way. And they're all just pretty soaps that are going to be used anyway. The ribbon's not going to last forever on there. It's made out of soap. But as you see, all you need to do is wrap your soaps in clear wrap or shrink wrap or whatever you do and put ribbon over them. And they're instantly a present. They're instantly a package, a picture of a present or a gift, if you will. And then you, if you, like I say, you put them together in a little box and there you go. It's a great little gift set. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it and thank you for watching. There will be a lot more gift ideas coming soon. Thanks. Bye.